story number one, becoming the master and selling it. So we were, we were been talking about mastery in terms of the creative sense and developing your craft and building things out and growing for the future, whether it be your business, your art, your, your personal self, whatever. And then there's, that's the craft side of it, the creative side of it. And then there's this business and financial side, the pieces that keep the, the behind the scenes running. And that's where the selling part of it comes from, mastering your craft and then selling it. And this came up because of a discussion or not a discussion, but an observation that Theo had about Chris Rock and Kevin Hart. Tell us how that a little observation went, Theo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there is a new Netflix, once again, shout out to Netflix documentary coming out about two legendary comedic icons, Chris Rock and Kevin Hart, and they're getting together just talking. And I watched the trailer, probably some stories I've already heard before, but it'd be something to just reiterate. But something that Chris Rock said in the promo promotion for in during this trailer just stuck with me. And he said, art is subjective, comedy is subjective, but killing on stage is not. And I paused for a second. I was like, what is Chris Rock? What unlock, what secret gem is Chris Rock trying to hint at here? Because we don't do talk a lot about comedy here on this podcast, but as we all know, comedy is subjective. It's an eye to beholder. Art, Mr. Benjamin, you're an artist. A lot of people like what they like and they don't like what they don't and just don't know. But he said, killing on stage is not. And killing on stage is a euphemism as a comedian is basically being on stage and just getting people to laugh at what you're saying. And it's almost like you're communicating stories so humorously that they just can't help themselves with laughter. And to me, that just opened my eyes to laugh. Being a comedian can kill on stage is not subjective. It's something that can, is, is basically something that can happen pretty much almost all the time. Um, and to me, that means that's a skill, right? If you can create something that can do it all the time. And it just blew my mind because most people don't think of comedy, uh, such a crazy thing. They think that this could be a skill that can be developed, especially if you're on stage and get people to laugh um, without a lot of, you can get people laugh pretty much on command. And so that just opened my mind to this mastery and what does that mean? And just any realm of work that you do. So Mr. Benjamin, the artist, what do you, what does that mean to you? We talk about this on all the time about how we both want to build mastery and, and uh, selling and marketing because those are skill sets that we may not have developed over yeah. our careers and dealing. It's just one of those things that people don't realize that's such a fundamental skill to be an entrepreneur. And this just opened my eyes to, man, but there is this fundamental skills to just any type of profession, even if you think it's just art that you can master and you can do. And it's really opened my eyes to that, really, when I listen to that. And so that's where I'm coming from this statement. And yeah. I want to get your take on, and this is what we do in this podcast, right? Show versus business, where we talk about like how we can learn from show business and how they can inform us in our own business. That's another way to look at it. That's how I look at it. So well, what, do, what does this statement mean to you? How does that make you feel as an artist? A lot of people, a lot of people in artistic or creative ventures, they tend to say, if I just keep on and I'm good at something, or I can make very beautiful pictures, or I have a nice singing voice that should automatically take me into that upper stratosphere. And you're like, and that that's just a, a, a conception. And what I've gotten from a lot of business people is that, yeah, you just, you're just good at business. You know how to talk to people, the right avenues to take. You're able to tell a deal from a scam and you just grab a bottle of ketchup and you could turn it into the next big thing. It's okay, but there's got to be some kind of craft and ketchup. Like, no, it doesn't matter. We can do this. Let's give it some gimmick and whatever. And you see this disconnect and neither side is necessarily wrong. There's this area of overlap. If you had a Venn diagram, creativity and finances, art and business, whatever you want to call it, show business. I don't know what to call that sweet spot in the middle, but what he's getting at with this killing on stage, it's not an accident. It's something that's crafted and you have to stop and consider your creativity in the, in light of the product that you're selling and 
yeah, you're selling yourself on stage. You're trying to sell people on ideas and these jokes, and you've got to make sure that you're hitting all the right cities. You got to make sure that you're doing all the right things. And Kevin Hart really, he showed up on quite a few business podcasts, actually. And we're talking about gurus before. He was at the 10X Growth Con. So mm -hmm. he did that whole thing and everybody loved him on stage. So no, they get it. They don't sell that side of things. But when they say stuff like this, you're like, no, they totally get it. No. And when I, most people don't realize that comedians, they work hard to craft an hour special. They go away for a while. You see them show up every now and then on a, a podcast or on your favorite radio station. But the vast majority of the time, they're on the road practicing material. They're learning how to say a joke a hundred different times, right? And they know exactly what, what word to emphasize. The beginning, the last word, the beginning, middle word, right? They know how to say it. They know what voice to use. They know. It's like all these different components. I think you did some stand up for a second. I didn't know how much that went into that. It's almost like building. They know that every time this joke is going to kill because they've done it so many times <laughs> to that point. So when they put it on wax or put it on a, t a TV special, they just know that this is works. And then some can do it faster than others, but there's still that, that period of time they have to build that up and, and they craft that over time. I never knew that until like maybe a couple of years ago, how this was built and it just blows your mind that that's what he means was that skill set you built. And then before that skill set was built, you have to realize how to take your ideas. We all have ideas yeah. and how to turn them into jokes. And that takes a, a, a skill, right? To understand yeah, that yeah. piece. And then once you turn it to a joke, you still got to learn how to deliver that joke. Cause you could probably create a great joke, but you might've be the per best person to deliver it. And you may have to just sell that joke to someone else to deliver it. They can do it with yeah. better you. So it just blew my mind and just all the different skills that go into creating a joke that was going to get people to laugh every time. And to me, that, that blew my mind. I think there's insights that can be taken on just any of these things that we talk about these gurus all the time. Alex Hormozzi said, sales is pretty straightforward. You get good at it by just doing it. And you could probably get good at it in a couple of weeks if you just sell almost every day someone and mm -hmm. persuade them. And then over time, it becomes almost natural to undercover and using questions to only cover uh, what they're dealing with, undercover what their problems are, leading them to figure out what they need so that you can persuade them on you have an offer that maybe can help them. So, so right. to me, that's just opened my eyes to like, even the art, something as subjective as that, there's opportunities for skill development. Yeah, definitely. And I actually want to throw Alex Ramosi under the bus right quick. <laughs> 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 he's ex he's really big on on just continually doing something and getting better and i think he's going as he's going so hard and at such a level that there's nobody in his way there's nobody really competing with him on what he's doing of course it works and i'm saying of course like i'm a hundred times millionaire or whatever like him but he leaves out the part about deliberate practice. And I think he gets this internally, but he doesn't really say it too often where it's, no, you don't just continually do something. You have to stop, adjust, reassess what's going on, look at things very, like he's very good at looking thing, looking at things, observing what happened here, what went there, and then going, oh, okay. So this is like this, this is like that and adjusting. I think he does that so naturally. He doesn't put that out there as something you need to do. Because Benjamin Hardy talks about, or somebody, maybe it wasn't him. They're talking about how if you've been doing something 20 years, you don't have 20 years of experience mm. being a, a, a bricklayer. You've got one year of experience bricklaying for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. You know, you've got one year of experience yeah. that you've repeated 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I heard Myron say that, Myron Golden. But yeah. yeah, there have been others. Yeah. And to your point, you're saying there's a deliberate practice so that you can elevate your skill level. And he talks about that a little bit, really just about understanding where you can improve on your different skill, skill stacking, right? How you improve on your skills and getting feedback. But to your point, maybe he, he goes so fast and rapidly through the, the systems that you don't realize, oh, this takes time to develop that skill set to get comfortable with it. It's really about confidence, right? Knowing that this works and every time you do it. But I agree, it's that proficiency and then 
To your point, I want to go back to what you covered was that intersection between the art and the business and understanding you still have to make that art something great and, or because if they get it, if it's crap, it will never, you, you want to sell that thing for the rest of your life because you can always find the next new black or bird term sucker to sell that to. But if it's good, then it makes the, it makes it selling easier to marketing easier. So I do feel like that product piece of killing on stage, crafting that, that joke, making it really crisp and great can help you then that you become legendary because you create art that no one can surpass. Yeah. By the way, random note, the killing on stage relates to laughing so hard you die, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed till I died. You remember, you remember Roger Rabbit? They had the, yes. the, we, the weasels. Don't laugh. Don't laugh too hard. You'll die. <laughs> I do remember those. I do remember those. I was just thinking of those. Yeah, I've been there. Someone just so laughed. Well, let me read well, this aside, though. You had, the funniest thing I've ever been was at a Dave Chappelle concert back in Atlanta. That had to be like maybe almost 20 years ago. I was at the Tabernacle. And he just started talking. And man, I was laughing my head off. I, I was sitting next to a friend. I said, What's he talking about? She said, I don't know. I said, I don't know either. <laughs> it's actually just funny. <laughs> And it was just like, blew my mind. He just up there, he just been saying me. And we were just, ah. <laughs> exactly. he's playing us like, he's playing us like a okay, boy. It's amazing yeah. how they can do that. But uh, yeah. that's a, yeah, it's a good thing to study. We'll definitely be coming back to discussions like this. Got any more on that? Nah, I'm good. <laughs>